Hello Troops, Tomo here. But before we get on to this next episode of the Granite Zero podcast, quick couple of shout outs. Combat Fuel. Now Combat Fuel is a veteran owned, veteran run company with some of the best leading sports supplements out there. Not only that, but they give proceeds to charity. If you want 15% off, put in the promo code WARRIOR15 at checkout and get yourself 15% off. Also, if you go to Dead Mammoth Coffee Company and get yourself some roast to order coffee, ground down specifically to your taste, whichever you fancy. Put in the promo code MILL15 at checkout for your 15% off. Now, right flank. Right flank have supported the podcast for a very long time now. With some of the best sports apparel out there, and they also support other veteran companies. If you want to get 15% off, put in the promo code FLANKED15 at checkout for 15% off. Last but not least, Infusion CBD. Infusion CBD is the best in the UK. I use it to help with my own aches and pains and general, general wear and tear of my muscles and joints. Also, I use it to help me sleep better at night and to help me with my depression and anxiety. If you want to get 15% off, put in the promo code GRANITE15 at checkout for 15% off. But without further ado, joining me today is the one and only Darren Little Brown Thompson, the Brothers of Destruction, Degeneration X, the Legion of Doom, whatever you want to call us. We go into depth about pretty much everything that's going on in the world at the minute. So, without further ado, welcome to the Grand Zero Podcast. snack by telling you you're being recorded. You just told me to do that. Well, there we go. Thank you very much for informing me that I'm being recorded. <laughs> oh, it's got a beer. Uh, yeah, I thought, why not? It's lunchtime. Do you know what? Skype's updated or what, but it looks weird. Ah, uh, we're all good. That's better. We're back to normal. I had a, like, a line going across across your head. It's, it's all good now, though. It's all good. Yeah. So, isolation and that. Yeah. It's not so bad, mate. Getting stuff done. Um, normal life for some people. Yeah, I don't know how they people. Got... Say again. They've all gone nuts. Yeah, they have. To anybody actually listen to this, and mm. I don't know how many people do listen to it. You've got all the analytics for it, but can you all stop being idiots, please? If you just bought stuff the way you normally do, you wouldn't run out, and the supermarkets and corner shops could keep up with the demand. You idiots going out there and mass buying everything off the shelves are literally causing this this issue. If you just buy as normal, maybe get an extra tin each time you go. That's the thing, though. So they're all going out mass buying, causing this panic, which is not needed. The government haven't said, don't go out and do your food shop. No. They haven't said that. They said just limit the contact you're doing with by going out. Yeah. And essential things like your food shop, crack on. Yeah. And the, the thing is that the government will have to take measures if if people are acting like idiots. If you just go about your normal day, they don't have to enforce 
people having to stay home and you can one person from each household can leave etc if you just shop as normal and maybe don't go as a couple or take your kids with you just go by yourself get the few bits that you would normally get a couple of times a week add like i said like rather than buying which is it's too late now but rather than buying out all the bottled water all the you know just get get one and then maybe a, one extra smaller pack do you know what i mean if you if you're just trying to buy up everything i mean there's gonna be some doris that can't go and get her toilet rolls but at, <laughs> at the same time as well hey old people stay indoors yeah, you don't there know. are so many old people just kicking around. That's just a I've survived the war mentality. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I get that. But get your grandkid to pick you up a loaf of bread. Yeah, yeah. Not a problem. Not a problem. But I, I just don't get... Because everybody I speak to seems to be normal. And I'm like, yeah, it's mental, can't get anything from the shop. Um, not even buying any extras, I just wanted to get a loaf of bread. Yeah, I went, uh, down, I went down to Aldi yesterday just to get a few little bits to top up, because obviously the kid's going to be off school. Little things like a few chocolate bars and that. That's all fine. There's loads of chocolate bars and things. Why have we all gone nuts over toilet paper? I, I don't know. Is you, my camera weird? Right now, you are really clear. Yeah, and the background's blue. Blue. Okay, that's cool. I, I think I did something with the with the settings, but because I'm only small in the corner, I can't really. So I didn't mean to do this, but if it means that I'm clearer, that's good. Because usually, it will, there is that. But um, <laughs> no, no. Um, with this laptop, I've been. This is the one I've been having problems with. And I've got like four cameras now that, and I can't work out how to make any of them a, a like a streaming camera. Yeah, I know what you mean. Which is annoying, but um, if it's if it's clear enough, that's that's cool. Um, yeah, so like, people are idiots, and I, but I want to know who these idiots are and why I don't know it. They're, they're the ones on Facebook learning about everyone else. Probably, yeah. I, I don't know. It's, um, I don't get it, mate. I really don't. Uh, but yeah, I, I, the old people just... Like the, they're the only ones that have been told, look, you really need to look after yourselves. And they're not even the we, we survived the war thing, because most of them... Most of them probably didn't. Yeah, it's, it's sort of getting past that era now. Era. Yeah, um, but and the whole British stiff upper lip thing. It's like, yeah, that's cool, but there's a reason why everywhere else in the world are limiting social gatherings to like as minimal as ten now. Yeah, it's not. It's not just because you keep a stiff British upper lip gonna go away. It's just be a bit sensible about it. <laughs> but on a plus side, no new cases in China. So, uh, I mean, I don't always believe what China is saying, though, mate. I don't always believe. So I keep saying to Kate, "There's no, there's no truth in the news, and there's no news in the truth." Yeah, I mean, I think that can be. Um, I mean, on on a plus side, the news isn't full of people hating. People of different religions. There's no, no, no news of terrorism or anything like that. So in, in in a way, it's almost like it's brought the world together a little bit more, and not focusing on stuff that doesn't really matter, which is, and only focusing on what does matter, which is essentially what the news should do. But yeah, you know I mean? <laughs> yeah that's exactly right, really. But it has ruined football this season. Yeah, I just seen actually Alex Song and um, what was it? Um, who was it? Hang on, Alex.
Mike Song and um, Johan Juru that used to play for Arsenal um, have just been sacked by their football club because they wouldn't take a pay cut. Come on, guys. Now you're fucked. Now you got no money. Yeah, you got no money. Yeah. It's, it's the hole behind closed doors is is not good for professional sport, is it? No. Just I mean, see- no, and um, yeah, uh, it's going to be weird because I'm going to try and watch uh, Mason's fight tonight. Yeah. It's going to. It's going to affect everything, isn't it? Even the commentators are going to be a bit subdued. Yeah, well, I watched um, a bit of the Oliveira fight in Brazil. Yeah. And it just seemed very strange. You could hear the cornermen and things like that. Yeah. Like, you don't hear them. Yeah. And when Michael Bisping was doing his bit at the end, congratulations to whoever he went, give it up for. It's like, oh, that's nobody here to... Probably well to give it up to. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but it's necessary if they still want to go ahead with these fights and um, sporting it's events. Their job, isn't it? It, it? it is their job, but, but yeah, I, I, I don't know. It... But without the spectators, it's not it's a strange one. It's not your normal nine to five. You sort of need when you get to that upper echelon of. Yeah. Well, I think Bellator paid all of their fighters that were due to fight that they had to cancel anyway, in full. Because the thing is, for for one event, which would only be the more recent events, yeah. all of those companies can afford to pay those fighters, and that's what they should do. Yeah. Because that it's not it's not their fault that they can't fight. They haven't missed weight. They haven't pulled out. They've gone through the camp. They've had to pay for the camp. They should, you know, they should. I think, like even the likes of Jack Shaw and Jack Marshman, um, Woodley, all those guys should just pay them. Pay them what you're going to pay them. Pay them both the the loser's salary, so you're not giving up win bonuses or anything like that. Yeah. Pay them exactly what you would have paid them if they lost the fight, or what the I don't know, say say Jack was getting paid less than his opponent, pay his opponent the same as what Jack would be get pay, get paid. If you know what I mean. Yeah. And then you're gonna save some some money there. I I don't know. I mean I'm not in in control of that amount of money, but you'd think you take a loss, you keep your fighters, or maybe they're looking at it, they keep their fighters anyway. I don't know. But people can only fight. They, they can only fight as long as they can pay, pay for camps. Exactly. And for example, the likes of Mason, he, he went off to Alpha Male for yeah. a bit of it. But that's not going to be cheap, is it? Mm-hmm. Dividend. Yeah. All just it's just all a very strange time, isn't it? It is. It's been a weird one, 2020 so far, isn't it? With the floods and... It was the floods, Kirby Bryant passed away. Yeah. A, a virus is... Just a quick one. It's a virus, people. It's not a disease. There's a difference. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fuck you. I'm not going to let this disease rule my life. It's not a disease, mate. It's like that beast. Not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um... Yeah, weird, weird times. Like I was, I was listening to the fight with the kid yesterday, and like Brian was saying, he was hoping to be back doing his shows for in May. And like, yeah. the great thing about it is you can tell they haven't discussed it beforehand, because Brendan was like, May? You think people have money in May? Yeah. And he said, he said, oh, I'm, and Brendan was like, that people are not going to be in a position to go to shows, or are they going to want to? Until like maybe July, August. Yeah, exactly. So, regardless of whether people can, you know, if if we if we do subdue the the spread of the virus and we, you know we get back on our feet, and it's going to take people a bit of time to be able to re, re, recoup their bank accounts and 
especially and, and also maybe want want to be in big social groups as well. That's because they get take a bit of time, um, and I can I can talk for experience in this. I'm sure you can as well because you're with your job. But Kate's self-employed. Yeah. So if people stop coming in to get her, their hair cut, which is completely understandable with the two meter rule and stuff. How hard is going to cut hair? <laughs> Um, you're one of those things you get when you, you yeah. stick up to uh, cut trees. <laughs> cut trees, look. I was so going to say, that's some, some shit. At one, head, point, head. at one point, it's going to be just my paycheck yeah. on me. Which, as it stands, if we do go into this lockdown, I'm not classed as a key worker. Uh, key worker. So. Okay, I get sick pay though. If I get yeah, yeah. So, um, tell me, I've got to pay me. Yeah, and the thing is, um, the government are, are sort of trying to work this out, and you can sort of see what they're trying to do. It's it's, it's a Tory government, so they're going to be looking a at economics first. Yeah. Every every time I've heard. Boris Johnson speaking, he speaks about economy before anything else. Um, yeah. So, at the moment, what they're trying to do is secure businesses so they don't have to close as best they can. And to be honest, mate, you think about the amount of businesses. I mean, there probably are ways around it that you know different parties would say you could do different economical um, experts would say you know. You're going to have to cut back on sending aid money to different countries and send that to you, uh, British businesses first. But same time, well, I, I don't even know what, why we send so much money. I, 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 I don't. I think that pro- right. This is absolute bro science, but that probably started when we tried to take over the world. Yes, yeah. and and also, like, I, I found out the other day um, with somebody that that I work with. Um, he said that apparently, like France, Italy, places like that, we still send them money to look after their roads after World War Two. It's nice of us, isn't it? We ma- we maintain their their infrastructure. Cars. We Our didn't roads. Start- no, we didn't start it. And yeah, the nor- fucking te- technicians on it. They're super. Their roads don't fall apart, do they? No. Um, yeah, roads. But um, yeah, I don't know enough about it. And if if you start saying things like that, you do start sounding a bit like those idiots at the BNP and uh, BNP, sorry, and um, UKIP and and yeah. you know, yeah, you start sounding a little bit like that. But in order to keep those businesses alive, would that money be better spent? Yeah, sometimes can can they refuse to give them the aid money? Is there something they've signed that says uh, I don't know? But it's also um, it's but also what you're going to do if we just stop? It's what yeah, it's one of those things like Mum used to say: charity starts at home. So yeah, I I do I I agree with that to a certain degree. Sometimes, but obviously the other those other countries that we are sending the aid to obviously need it. Or do they? I don't. I, that's what I mean. I don't know but enough about it to have a, a strong opinion. About those conspiracy rabbit holes, like where's all that money from, like children in need and shit. Yeah. Where's Where's it gone? Yeah, because it's still the same adverts as when I was a kid. Yeah. That was like nearly forty years ago. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> cases in, in Africa. Is that because it's too hot? Does this thing not survive in heat? Well, yeah. Um, because there were, there's talks of uh, Habib versus Tony in Saudi Arabia, isn't there? Yeah. And love I'm that. not sure. I'm not. Hey? You'd love that. Who? Habib going to a Muslim country to. Yeah, yeah. Um, All the um, so maybe it, it, it doesn't survive in, in the hotter climates because I haven't heard of any cases over there 
or the Middle East so much. But again, I'm not looking into it that much, to be honest. I'm just checking the news every, to, you know, to, do I have to stay indoors indefinitely now? That's the sort of thing that I'm... Yeah, yeah, that's what we for. Um, because and I'm, I'm trying to stay off social media to a certain extent as well because literally it's either people preaching that they ain't going to stay indoors or it's people complaining about stuff and like, I can't really be bothered with that like I said to you the other day I've been quite enjoying just walking around with a camera with my dog in, in a way it's nice you get to reconnect with like uh, like people people that you don't normally talk talk with but you also look on online and then you get this I'm going to try and put it on hopefully it shows let me turn my brightness down can you see that Facebook what? certified expert infectious diseases <laughs> right yeah <laughs> there's so many experts on, on the line I know I, I can't I can't be bothered That's with it um, next week by the way Exclusive. I'm gonna have uh, my boy Luke Neeson coming on the show. He's a paramedic. He's gonna be talking to us a bit about what they're dealing with and how they're dealing mm-hmm. with it. It'll, it'll be a good little chat. Yeah. Because um, I, I, I sent him, a, I sent him a message on the Gunners group the other day. I was like, look, as much as I'm joking about taking the piss out of it all, what the fuck is actually going on? Yeah. And he, and he, he came out with some stuff which was quite handy yeah well it's like I've spoken to a couple of nurses and they don't even seem to know they'll know what to do but they don't seem to know what the government is doing with regards to like this isolation stuff and um, like for example for us whether Georgie wants she's had this 14 day period she allowed to go to and from my house to her mum's house um, like she doesn't know and you look at like what the government websites are advising it's all it changes and it's all sort of like really loosey goosey there's no yeah there's no like this is bit, what you have to do and do this like, you, you can go to the pub but don't go to the yeah. You can go to the pub. Go to the pub, but don't, don't fucking go to the pub. Hey, yeah. how about you tell me that I'm not allowed to go to the pub? Yeah, if you just... Again, like, I, I know it sounds absolutely mental, but from what I've heard, um, house owners, landlords, um, and... <laughs> I don't know if that goes on to like business landlords, but mortgage payments are going to have like a, a holiday period, so you don't get. It. But but that's not what they haven't done. They haven't done the same for. So the landlord's not paying any money out, for example. Yeah, but you still have to pay him. Though. You still have to pay the rent, and so the business owners have to pay their rent. So the business side of thing is again. This is very Tory, isn't it? The rich are getting richer. The poor are getting poorer, and I'm like I'm not politically minded enough. But like you'd think by now it'd be like right, if if homeowners are getting this relief, so are so are tenants, so are business yeah. businesses. Um, and if it, if you did that with with the, the the pubs and I can stay open once it blows over. Yeah, because they they don't have like you've just freeze all outgoings. It's yeah. like sorry. Sorry, like, I mean, and if need be, then all the government does is it takes over for a short period of time. But I mean, who the hell am I? What am I, like, what am I, a strategist now? But it's just in my head, you just think, like, okay, so the government is not getting taxes in from business, it's not getting taxes in from people. Retake over the energy suppliers. Like, you're not energy suppliers now for, for three months. This is government run. Um, and the government pays for that. The government pays for that, and then they're not giving out grants to um, to businesses that make X amount or Y amount because the, the, the business can close and then reopen once once you're in a position to reopen. And nobody's fucked then. But I, I don't. Maybe that's too. Who the fuck are you? I know. 
I know. I started talking then. I've been reading all the books. Say again. <laughs> You've been reading all the books, mate. Yeah, all yeah, I've been reading books and just walking and thinking. Yeah, do you know what I do? Not a lot, because I'm part chip. Yeah, well, uh, mostly chip. I um, <coughs> I've been going on my adventures with Jack, haven't I? And I said to you on the phone the other day. Um, that before or after you put that stupid hat on? No, that's my walking Jack hat. Okay. Change it. No, it keeps my head warm. Um, what was I saying? Yeah, so it was. It's, it's been a little bit weird because I sort of went back to when when I was training people and had that sort of time all the time. And t- you know, I did little things. I'd take Jack for a walk, but didn't really overly appreciate it because. I, that's what I always do and now I've been forced to not work for I don't know how long it's putting things like that in place to make that my regular routine and then doing stuff like writing down what I was thinking about um, while I was walking around and then it gives you a, a stronger opinion maybe when you're then talking about these, these things because you've thought about it and you've kept that thought, and then, you know, even even being a little bit more creative, like I worked, like there's literally on that walk that I went on, not a great deal. They're literally empty fields until you get down by down by the river, and then I started noticing the trees and like the damage that the trees had taken with. Was that these, was that from the floods that people have forgotten about? Floods and the storms that people have forgotten about. <laughs> the the end, end of days that is 2020. Um, and, but but what, what I did on that last walk is I was like, I'm going to take pictures of my dog, but I'm also going to take pictures of trees on this walk. And I was quite surprised that when I when I was um, just walking about, I somebody else said, said it the other day, but. And I'm not sure, did I start the conversation off with this? But it was like, so, uh, in the States, they've just had an earthquake, yeah? Alongside the coronavirus, and everyone's losing their mind over the coronavirus. And all of a sudden, Mother Nature just goes, hold my beer. (laughs) Here's an earthquake. Tiny little microbes. (laughs) You you make a few people sick, whilst you make the world shake. Um, but it, it, it was making me think as I was walking around, like, and it's it's gonna. I'm gonna do an Instagram post of it somehow. Um, and it sort of goes back to that sort of Fight Club mentality where it's like, oh, you thought you were good, uh, you're working hard, you thought your bank account was in in good. Um, I can't even think of the words now. Words are failing me. Um, you've got a decent bank account. You thought um, your job was safe. And then along comes Mother Nature and, again, hold my beer. And then I'll end it with something like, you are not your fucking khakis. And quote Tyler Durden. Because, you know, it is true when you look, you look at well, end up owning you. That's my favourite one. The things you own end up owning you. And it's true. Not until you've lost everything that you're free to do anything. And I'll have yeah. one. Oh, yeah. got good... nah, it's a good book as well, isn't it? Yeah, I, I, I will admit I haven't read the book. But maybe that's something I can order. Shit. Order it. Get it down, yeah. Do you know what I have enjoyed at the minute? Just uh, off, completely off subject on a tangent. How Adidas and Nike have now gone into sort of competition. We're going to re-release all our old favourite boots. Yes. Slightly what? Like a like a new version. Right. I'll show you. So I had these boots 
way back when. But now they've re-released them, but with like a, a new sort of twang. Oh yeah, I remember. Yeah, I remember them. Full skull style. Yeah. But um, so Nike have done it with them. I think they're, they're total ninety something or other. Yeah. Adidas are now re-released the blue prints. Yeah, I did the main. Was it the manias? Yeah. Yeah, I saw those. Uh, I saw. Keep it good. So, keep it good. The thing is, they're, 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 they're decent boots, and obviously the technology changes, but I, I'm not a massive fan of like the material and stuff that the newer boots are made of. Uh, I prefer I, not leather. Leather yeah. boot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, for me, it's more... Um, I used to like really enjoy the whole cleaning my boots and polishing them up and the care of the boots, whereas these are just like you wipe them clean, which I suppose in today's society of want everything instantly, that's yeah, yeah. that's perfect. There's nothing better like playing on a Saturday or even on a Sunday, depending on how old you was. Go to um, the sink in the utility room, clean yeah. it up. You ain't getting get a bollock in the next day because you didn't clean them up. Yeah, your, boots were clean, your, uh, your boots were gleaming, but the uh, the side of the utility room was just filthy. That's, it's filthy. <laughs> oh, brilliant. <coughs> so I've got... I've lent Georgie my beats and um, got these ones that... They're just like Sony studio headphones and they're not very comfy. Maybe I've got them backwards. Maybe. My, um... Yeah, I had them off backwards. What a donkey. My JVC ones, they're, they're... I tried it because they're Bluetooth, it's just the sound is shit. Yeah. Uh, I'd be able to hear you perfectly well, but me talking to you, you'd be able to hear what I'm saying. Right. Uh, that's why I don't wear them. Hopefully, all this blows over by July 12th, though, because football. Yeah. But, well, who knows? Fingers crossed. I reckon it'll be done by end of May. <laughs> May 26th. Don't pay first, folks. So, right, so, okay. so okay. less doom, less doom and gloom. Um, yeah, gloom, but it is making us forget everything. It's fucking Mother's Day on Sunday. Yeah, yeah, I know. Um, so, against um, our initial advice, uh, Dad came home yesterday, <laughs> um, and I think when. I, once he was once he was home and I had a chat with him, I saw his reaction change slightly to how potentially serious it is. And now he's been sat watching the news and stuff. I think he um, he sort of has his head in the clouds a little bit because I think he's not really on any social media, and I'm not sure how much how much of the newspaper he reads because I know he gets <laughs> the, no, but I know he gets the newspaper, and reads the sport. But he's got it more for a crossword. And when I started to explain to him these bits, and then like today he's been sat watching the news and stuff. So he's back. Um, and the reason that I was a bit late is because he, you can tell that he used to enjoy doing the day, the weekly shot because he went, he popped out just to get a few bits. And I just said to him, "Don't go mental, Dad. Just get cut, you know, a couple of things of baked beans." some uh, tin stuff and just bits that we can keep in the freezer. Right, so he comes back all excited because he got to do some shopping. And as I'm eating my lunch, he sticks, well, he sticks his hand in one of his bags. This is, if, if I could stop from getting furious at him, I think what I'm going to do is, is I've, we've got to have a section that shit my dad says. Because he, or, or shit, my dad does. Um, 
because he uh, so he sticks his hand in the bag he goes I don't know what you're doing to, uh, no, what we're doing today and it's like right dad no, you do your thing I'll sort Georgie it's not a we thing you just you do you because otherwise you disrupt me because I get into the swing things um, and so he picks out I don't know what we're doing today but here's a whole cooked chicken and I was like oh you've got all the meat uh, but not just that there's a chicken in the in the fridge a whole chicken that needs cooking or freezing he basically he he's got a few things that I've already got so you're essentially lowering somebody else's chance of having so I was like you should you should just check before you left on but also why did you get a whole cooked chicken <laughs> because, because also <coughs> also that wasn't for his lunch because he got himself some rolls and ham already had so ham he's, but a whole cooked chicken is going to be cold by the time you cook it he's got a whole you eat it. he's got a whole cooked chicken but I don't know when for <laughs> did he just see did he just go to Morrison's and go well I'll have one of them just in case uh, I, but anyway, that's not the funny story. That's why I was late. He had to, t- and, he, and every item he took out of the bag, he had to tell tell me about it. <laughs> Honestly, and he was like, "Yeah, so I got some of these. These are just fruit. What the th- the bit that says pineapple chunks on? I know what they are because it says." <laughs> and like, um, oh yeah, I got some cornettos. Where do you want them to go? The freezer. Obviously. Exactly. Um, As so you're watching Short Dead, is that why you bought Corn Out? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Right, from the shop, yeah, Corn Out. <laughs> but hey, he, got, he got the Cornettos, but he... Um, also, the, a funny thing... So I text you said, well, I just helped Dad, because he has... He, like, even lifting stuff out of the bags that he put on the floor, he was, he was like... Ugh! As he was going, he's on his back. Right. So as <coughs> when when he went when he was out, I said, "Could you just get, if you can, um, a few kilos of dog food?" And if you're in the pet shop, could you please please get a furminator? Because Jack's blowing at the moment, so this is like a special kind of brush you drag through. It grips the hair, and then you can let go of the hair. So if I'm down by the river, again. Q Liam Gallagher. Um, I can I can knock the the hair out and the birds take it for their nests and, and whatnot. It's, oh, so, look at you! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not that. Well, yeah, it is nesting season now, isn't it? So it's spring. Um, which would cut. Oh, it all makes sense now, doesn't it? That's why he blows this time of year, and then he blows again in the winter, and it keeps them warm. Um, so as I'm about to leave, so I've texted you saying just helped Dad put the shop in away. It wasn't just a case of putting the shop in away. There was a story behind every tin, and he goes, "Oh." So I was like, "Right, Dad, I'm going to speak to Sean now. Uh, he's going to do his podcast." Didn't listen. Wait, oh, should we talk about this brush? So, Tom, I just told you. That. <laughs> Well, I told you when you first got here 20 minutes ago, I'm going to do Sean's podcast. He was like, <laughs> as I'm walking out. What, what do you think is bloody brush boy? Is that the right one? Sh- sh- but, uh, anyway, so there's another funny story. So, obviously moved house, um, got slightly different kitchen setup, etc. Oh, this is brilliant. Dad hasn't really used any of the facilities just yet. Um, he has used a frying pan, made himself an omelette. Told me all about his omelette. It's, it's like when he does things that normal people do, he needs some sort of gratification for it. I, I don't know if you've noticed this. Yeah. He. <laughs> you still always do it when you cook dinner. Yeah. What do you think of that? What do you think of that? Yeah. Right, Dad, why have you put fucking cheese in my mashed potato though? Yeah. <laughs> but um, 
<laughs> so, so yeah, he's made his omelette, and he, he said again, he was telling me today about how he's going to make his sandwiches. He, he got himself some rolls for his lunch. Um, and it's the quick sandwich maker, though. Eh? Hey? Hands down, the quickest sandwich maker. Yeah, well, that's, he's also the shittest sandwich maker. Yeah, he's terrible. Um, yeah, he said to me, well, that's another thing. There's absolutely no tinned meat. Good. <laughs> Good. Good. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Fucking hell. Um, yeah, so he's, he's still sort of finding his way around the kitchen, but he's used the hob. Now, this morning, he was up uh, around... <laughs> it was about half an hour after I got up. Um, and I heard him sort of clanking about in his little granny annex out the back. And he came through and he was like, oh, could I have a coffee? I said, like, of course you can have a coffee, Dad. He said, oh, actually, you want any tea? Said, yeah. Makes him have tea. Uses two tea bags. <coughs> this isn't the funny part either. I just, I'm just going through all of this over in my head. He enters. <laughs> I don't know why. You know what he's like. He's weird, but it annoyed me because it's like, Dad, we are potentially in a place where we're supposed to be rationing slightly while you're using two. Uh, so, <laughs> right. So he then has to fill the kettle. Now I know what is going to happen if he puts the tap on full because it happened to me and. We've got incredibly high water pressure. Oh shit! <laughs> A bit like when right. you put your spoon underneath. <laughs> no. So anyway, he lifts the lid off the kettle. Um, that's something to talk about in the future. People who use the spout versus people who open the kettle to fill it. Um, but he's opened the whole kettle. It's well. First of all, he put the kettle on with no water in it. He didn't check. And, and it was and making that, and I'm behind him. Where he's screaming at you. Yeah. The bar, <laughs> yeah, there's that. <laughs> and so I'm stood behind him. Can't remember what I was doing, but I was doing something. And I was like, Dad, Dad, you need to put some water in the cow. And he didn't hear me. So he just go. I was like, Hey, put some water in the cow. And he was like, Oh. So he lifts the lid up. Puts it directly under, holding it, directly under the tap. Turns the tap on the faucet, because it's one of those bendy ones. Shoots out, and there's just water <laughs> shooting at the ceiling. But Dad completely <laughs> froze. He froze something. He froze <laughs> it. He was just squirting him, with water going up the ceiling and dripping on his head. And he just, he literally just looked at me. <laughs> With a mixture of surprise and anger on his face, and he then went into his little um, his little toilet downstairs. He didn't change his t-shirt. He dried himself. He dried himself, and then he went, took his glasses off, and left them in his, in his bedroom. Was wandering around going, "I can't bloody see without my glasses on." I was like, "He's a good And then. And then <laughs> Right, there's water everywhere. It's on my microwave, it's on the ceiling, it's on like, touching the lights, it's on the, the cupboards. He just went over and made his cup of tea. I had to clean it up. <laughs> <laughs> it's your fault, mate. But honestly, when he just froze there and sort of looked, sort of looked at me out the corner of his eye with the water still like spraying at the roof, Instead of turning it off, he just froze, put another hand on the kettle to, like, sort of do at it. <laughs> oh, it's brilliant. <laughs> oh, it's great. He's a lad, isn't he? <laughs> oh, there must be some sort of pressure going through there, boy. Oh. And then... And then he just, like, continued his day, got on his iPad, started changing his address for his credit card. <laughs> and I just, like, every time I looked at him, just started laughing. <laughs> Couldn't help it. He was a bloody pissed, a bastard boy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. Has he got himself some beers in, or is he still going to the pub? Um, 
Well, I've got a load of beer in the fridge, but he didn't want that, so he got himself four Guinness. That won't be enough for you, Tom. Ever. Four? Four Guinness, yeah. That will last him 20 minutes. Yeah. Just but, uh, four. I think he's still planning on going to the pub. I don't, I don't know. Well, Try it, said. Uh, it, in, in some ways, it's like, yeah, carry on going about your day, but also, and then you'll be out of my hair, not under my feet all the time. Um, He's going to do his OCD, no favours. No. Because he's, like, he's weird. He, 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 loves, like, he loves a project, doesn't he? But he won't set himself a project. So, I mean, if he, if he starts doing something... He goes all in, yeah. but he, he won't, these days, he doesn't start a project. But what, I don't, I don't know, yeah, anything, <laughs> just something other than the pub. Last time he had a, a proper project was my box bedroom, and he decided to paint the whole thing blue. <laughs> yeah, but not just any blue. Crayon blue. Crayon blue with navy blue. Yeah. Where even the back of the door. Yeah. <laughs> 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 bloody big blue, aren't we? Why? Didn't, didn't, you, didn't he, like, make you a bunk bed as well? And you were, like... Yeah. How you were, like, 15. <laughs> oh, I have a Ginny in that bed. <laughs> Winning me. <laughs> good times, good times. The shit telly on the, on the top of my blue wardrobe. Painting the wardrobe too. Living <laughs> blue. <laughs> the garden man is blue. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, he's never been the best at DIY, has he? No, but I feel like he should be better. I think it's because he just can't be asked. <laughs> yeah. If I'm honest. He does things and it works. All right, I've done that. Mental. Um. I was uh, reminiscing with... Uh, Jess and Sophia the other day when I had our uh, that little ice hockey well it wasn't ice hockey because it was not ice it was a street hockey set but we had it in the utility room <laughs> yeah. that was epic mate I used to put me uh, Mighty Ducks shirt on <laughs> yeah well it's funny you should say that I've um when I moved house, I noticed that I still had um, a couple of my albums when I went went to America. So I decided today, oh, yeah. I decided today I'm going to scan the photos and get. Uh, so I've got digital copies of them. Um, yeah. I thought I could do like just a series on um, on Instagram of just, a bit like almost like where are they now? Pictures of the yeah. kids because I, I, to be honest, there's only a few of them I, I remember their name. Um, but I got some like real good portrait photos and stuff and you know with the amount of people on social media now there's always that potential that if you, you hit the right hashtag or the right people at the right time that could, those those kids could have a picture of themselves at the summer camp that they were at if they're still alive you know <laughs> they, they didn't come from the best backgrounds um, yeah. and Wakanda wouldn't it yeah that's still there yeah but I uh, yeah I think so um, I'm not sure in what capacity they it works now, but um, I found those albums. I was having a little look through, and I used to like in 2001. I used to like wearing my clothes real big, real big, mate. Did we all? Uh, well, I was looking at it going, what? Even like my polo shirt. My polo shirt was like the same size that Dad would wear now. <laughs> <laughs> oh. We always do that. 
stage. Uh, Tenko, it'll pack stage. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that, that was that was fun looking through there. Um, so that's going to be like my project. I'm going to go through Where those. Oh. Well, they're no, not even that. Like, just get get all the photos done and um, make them look as good as possible, and just post them. Yeah. Well, not necessarily post them all. Just post the better ones, and um, then I've got more than one section of um, these photos. If they, you know, if they ever get destroyed or anything, I've just got them. Yeah. Because I think there is a place for analog stuff, like like actual photographs and um, magazines and th- things like that. Like actually having something. Vinyl's kind of like making it show in its face again now, isn't it? And it has it, like it, vinyl has a distinct sound. And like f- photos that have been yeah. done in a dark room, and when you hold them, like you have. It, you get a certain satisfaction out of that and um, as, as handy as digital is you don't get that satisfaction a lot of the time just that looking at something it's like going back to mum's and she's got all those photo albums under the under the stairs yeah have a little look through there yeah so it's, um, and then you look I mean, at it and you go yeah. why did you expect oh. me in that yeah always <laughs> I, I could fucking wrong it <laughs> if we if we were dressed the same, I looked a wrong in. <laughs> um, what was I going to say? That might be another little project I can do. Is get all of her photos. Because um, when Mum scans a one, she does it wrong. Well, I I feel like when Mum scans things, she doesn't scan them. She takes a photo of them. Uh-huh. And a photo of a photo of a photo is not the same as scanning, by any means. Yeah, got you. And that is obvious. Hey Donna, I know you're listening. Stop. <laughs> she does love a listen and a share. Yeah. I wonder how much of it she she does actually listen to. I don't think she listens to a whole hour episode if it's just me and you talking. that are in isolation and you're just joining us on Grand Zero Podcast there are 55 episodes you can listen back to <laughs> enjoy uh, yes. is don't say a pedo joke at a wedding, <laughs> a wedding yeah. Yeah. so how good would it be to have the sort of setup we've got now when when that happened because like the the original episodes, the the quality of the audio is just not quite there, is it? And um, it'd be amazing to just go re, like revisit that time and have the right equipment and have the right sound quality and the right settings. You know, both of us now have got our own technically our own studios. They're a work in progress, but it's so much easier. When you're not yeah. just trying to keep your voice down or um, have a time constraint, and I think that um, everybody around us understands more or less now. You know, if if we're podcasting, we're podcasting. It's a, only usually only usually an hour. Uh, Unless you're talking to Mason. <laughs> talking to me. Uh, sorry, I um. <laughs> Three minutes in the last. That, that's because he had to go pick up uh, Madison. Well, I um. He sent me a message because he really wants um, a burger when he after he's fought, and I said, yeah. uh, "You might have to come and sit at my house and um, order it because the restaurant might not be open, or find somewhere you can go." And he was like, "I might actually do that." And as I was um, replying to him, saying, "I don't know how it works, actually, mate. You might be able to sit in my garden, but technically, because Georgie was sent home from school." Um, the house is sort of in isolation, so I don't think he should really be coming around. But I'll have to check on those rules. I mean, it's, I guess for, in that regards, it's up to him, isn't it? 
he makes that yeah. call. Um, but I accidentally video called him. And could you answer? Him. No, he rang me back. <laughs> and I was like, T- don't, don't worry, mate. I, you know, it was, it was a bit of a pocket dial. Um, didn't mean to call you. Spoke to me for about three minutes about how he wanted a burger, etc. And I was like, it, you asked just such a what's his, what did Madison call him a chatty Sally? Yeah, yeah, Jackie, he, Cathy. Jackie Cathy, that's it. Sally, um, <laughs> it, Sally. Um, he, he's he's a genuinely a nice bloke though. That's oh, oh yeah, yeah, cracking guy. Definitely. Um, so yeah, he wants a burger and Jack Shaw wants a burger, but it is what it is at the moment, I think. Um, I, I genuinely don't, I don't know what's, what's going on. Because, you know, another, another problem I have is, like, Georgie had a cough. I'm pretty sure it was just a cough, but she's still coughing now. It's a pretty dry cough. If I start getting a cough, I have to take another two weeks off. Mm-hmm. Well, two uh, weeks when, when I start coughing. Which, again, it's for safety of safety of other people. But um, obviously, being asthmatic, I've got to be careful. But here's one for you. Phoned the pharmacy yesterday to say, look, I'm technically in isolation. Um, can I have some extra medication? No. I was, and I was like, I, I don't need it, but it would be handy to have because you never know like I've got a steroid inhaler and a reliever if I misplace one of those it would be far easier if I had a box in the fridge to go and get another one rather than having to e- either go out of isolation to the pharmacy or get someone to drop it off in which way I don't know how that works how you pay for that but do you know what I mean so just give me an extra why are you, why are you being so tight with the medication you're going to give me anyway and it's not even hoarding, it's just like, practically, like I don't want to be losing an inhaler, but it happens. Could yeah. be out with Jack and it falls out, of my, falls out of my pocket. You have got shit lungs, haven't you? But they're not the worst. Lungs. They're not the worst. There are people with far worse asthma and other respiratory problems than myself. <laughs> so yeah, um, you're still working, I guess, and at the minute, yeah. It's weird, though. I, I, we said on the phone or not, it's like... There's people in the offices, but there's nobody really walking around. Yeah. Just, I'm not back in until Monday, so we'll see. See how it is. You know what I mean? What time is the Cage Warriors? The Cage Warriors. I think he uh, said he, around 10, I think he said. 10 o'clock? I might make that up. That might be absolute bollocks. I mean, I did. I text, I text Mason this morning, or last night. Last night. Uh, he hasn't replied, but I'm guessing he's going to be Sam's phone today. Well, you replied to me this morning, so good luck. Um... Oh, maybe because yeah. I said it last night, yes. Well, in the last episode, he said um, he's been sleeping or trying to get later going to sleep so that he would get up later so that he would have that knock-on effect because he's got a later time that he's fighting. Uh, in my ticket, we, uh, we would have had to have been there at five. Cage Warriors as all the amateurs and that on first. And yeah, you don't have to be. Um, yeah, they would have had the um, amateurs and then the undercard and then the main event. And he's obviously the last of the main event. So yeah, that's probably about five hours before is probably right. <laughs> But like you, you said, your um, your laptop. Oh, I tried the lap. 
it's cutting it, cutting out, and there's a problem with Chrome or something. Yeah. Well, maybe your pro- project can be going like source them. Yeah, I'll need to go source a laptop. Just um, speak to someone in Curry's or something and just be like, this is what I'm using it for. Why are we discussing this on the podcast? <laughs> this is just a, a phone call. <laughs> Why are we doing this? is just like, what, what else can we talk about? What are you going to Curry's? <laughs> Uh, I think um, I, I was using Mark in Allison's yesterday. I had some documents I had to sign for the mortgage and what have you. They've got the lowest laptop. I think either Matt or Reese has been on it far too much. It's got a million fucking viruses on there. Yeah. It's the slowest thing ever. I'm trying to scan something and it's like, oh no, I wanted to throw it. Too bad. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Project 2.0. Yeah. I think it's important to get that, get that sorted. The, um, I've been sort of, while I was waiting for you to join, I was trying to think of what I can do with the shit here you know, in regards to moving stuff around and stuff. Yeah. Like, like, in some aspects, it's still a shit. <laughs> Tins of paint in that building. That's why I've got all the flags up because it's blocking the tins of paint. Yeah. And it's like, why have I got eleven tins of paint? I don't need it. No. Um, well, like I said to you, you could always get Mark to give you a hand. We just get some plasterboard up. What? Why are we talking about this on the podcast? This is no. supposed to be the, what happens. And then the next time. The next time people watch or don't watch or whatever, the shed has changed. And then you tell them about the check. We don't tell them about the process. <laughs> I can do it. Yeah, what is it? Well, we've been going for exactly an hour now. So. Come by, mate. Yeah. I'm not sure I understand. Excuse me? Fuck you. Sorry, that was my watch. Who the fuck are you piping at? <laughs> oh, Pipey Piperson. Fucking motherfucker. But I will say, I will say, Sean, once you get like the mic and the headphones and stuff, um, it just feels that bit better. Yeah, I, I was sort of looking around, going, "Where can I put the little boom, the boomer?" Thinking. Boomer. We don't okay. talk about this. Okay, Boomer. Okay, Boomer. What, what are you talking about? Ah, the arm, the boom. Ah. I'd call it a boom, what is it? This is a mic stand arm. A mic boom. I've got fucking arms everywhere. Yeah, look, I've got the old iPad, the floating iPad. You don't care, do you? You just started playing. <laughs> You don't, you don't care. Have you seen um, those um, uh, at-home things where they're doing the keepy-ups with the, with the toilet paper? No, but also don't use toilet paper for that. There's people not, not got them. There's a shortage, isn't there? <laughs> <laughs> it's just bizarre. Right, we're going into a crisis, potentially. What do we need? We need all the fucking toilet paper. What for? And eggs. So I was speaking to mum yesterday. She's been getting 25 dozen eggs a day in, and they're still selling out. Right. You can't be eating that many eggs. (laughs) There's only so much you can do with eggs. And you certainly aren't making your own bread. And pasta, because them sold out. So what do you need so many eggs for? Poor chickens. How do you make chickens lay more eggs? Get more chickens? They just do, I guess. Well, how? Like, hey. What, 
What's a good chicken name? Martha. Martha, you're going to need to label eggs now. Ah, okay. But, uh, Hello. How'd you get a chicken? You just have to. Nope. I, I'm going to look this up. <laughs> yeah, you definitely don't need that many eggs. Why are your eggs selling out more than anything else? Uh-huh. What, to put, what are people thinking? Like, I understand that, you know, get a couple of blocks of cheese in, some milk, get. Yeah, one big four pint of milk and one big four pint of milk, but one in the fridge, one in the freezer, is set for a while. Or get long life milk. Yeah, or get it all from the shelves. And then when you go to open your freezer, which you've only got so much freezer space as well, remember, all you've got in there milk. And then you're like, shit. What should I have got some poor? Yeah. Definitely building them forward, certainly. Yeah. Well, anywho, I reckon we knock this one on the head because we're starting to. Yeah, we. Shit. Don't, don't ramble about the whatever. Yeah. Whoa! I got. Sorry, I was just going to say, I'm just going to go and check if Dad's used the sink Run, again. Rip it. Bailey. Sweet as enough, Robert. All right. Go on, mate. I will. Bit. Speak to you in a bit. Ciao. Don't say ciao. Bye. <laughs> there you have it. The latest episode, the latest instalment of the Granite Zero podcast with myself and Little Brown. Life in isolation, eh? So it's how, how it is. But as always, thank you to Combat Fuel, Dead Man with Coffee, Right Flank, and Infusion CBD. Without those companies, probably wouldn't be going. Or it probably would be. <laughs> anyway, isolation is getting us mad crazy. Stand by for the next episode where I'll be joined by a good friend of mine, Luke Neeson who I served with on 15th Squadron Royal Air Force Regiment, who is now a paramedic in the NHS. So stand by for his insight in what's going on at the moment, and stand by for that episode of Drop. It's going to be brilliant. But without further ado, as they say in the regiment, per arduo here, through adversity, I'm Tomo and I'm out.